Today's subject is the aerosol setup as a high flow oxygen system. I threw this presentation together pretty quickly, so uh, please tell me in the comments if I've made any errors or mistakes such as misspellings. But uh, despite that, I hope you'll find the content worthwhile. Let's get started. You're looking at a typical aerosol setup or an aerosol generator. Uh, you can see where it connects to the oxygen flow meter. Next is the little device that you uh, dial in your desired FiO2. Uh, it tells you what flow rate to put the flow meter on also there. Uh, the output for the connection of your corrugated blue tubing and this type has a pre-filled uh, bottle. Uh, here's another type. This one uh, is not a pre-filled but one you could fill up with saline. Uh, you'll also need an oxygen flow meter for this setup. Of course an aerosol mask and the tubing to go from the nebulizer to the aerosol mask. Quickly, let's look at the difference between an uh, aerosol versus a humidifier. Some people remark that they look similar, but they do two very different things. An aerosol generator uh, draws water up to a nebulizer where it uh, can produce it into an uh, aerosol, just like a medication nebulizer. This aerosol is suspended in the air and clearly visible. Bubble humidifiers, however, add small amounts of uh, invisible molecular water as the uh, oxygen bubbles pass through the liquid. Uh, be careful, uh, nebulizers, because of the high water output, can spread bacteria. Humidifiers uh, generally do not. Uh, the aerosol generator is the correct choice if you want to humidify an artificial airway. Okay. How uh, does the nebulizer work and why is it a high flow system? The circle you see on your slide is the Venturi and that's the thing that makes this thing work. Uh, you're able to dial in a precise FiO2 because this device automatically entrains room air. Now the three flows that you're concerned with are the base flow, that's what you set the flow meter on, the entrained flow which is automatically entrained at the right amount by the Venturi, and finally, what is the total flow, the combined output of the system? Uh, and that would be, of course, at the delivered FiO2. Now here's how to figure it out. Total flow, that is. Well, let's learn by an example. Let's say, for example, that your Venturi is dialed in at 40% because that's what the doctor ordered. Uh, the flow meter, uh, base flow, is set as instructed at 10 liters a minute. So the question is, what is the entrained flow and what is the total flow output of the system? And here's how you figure it. Tic-tac-toe method. Draw a tic-tac-toe and put 120 in the spaces shown. Now you'll put your unknown in the middle, which is 40%, and you're going to subtract uh, diagonally. 100 minus 40 is 60. And again, 40 minus 20 is 20, kind of a backwards uh, diagonal there. Uh, so we have a ratio of 20 to 60. Now if we take 20 to make it 1 by dividing it by itself, but we have to do the same to the bottom, 60 divided by 20 is 3. This is a 1 to 3 oxygen to air ratio. Still though, what is our entrained flow? And here's how you arrive at it. Multiply the two parts of the ratio, both the 1 and the 3, times 10 liters per minute to get a base flow of 10 liters per minute. Three times that in entrained flow because that's what a 40% Venturi does. So it gives three times as much entrainment as it does base flow. Uh, so if you have 10 liters set on your flow meter, 30 liters per minute coming into the system, the total output would then be 40 liters per minute. You may want to pause this next statement and read it because it gives you basically the criteria for a high flow system and that it must be at least 30 liters per minute or more in order to have that precise FiO2. Let's do another example. Uh, Venturi is dialed in at 60%. The base flow meter is set at 10 liters per minute. Sorry about as at there, mistake. What is the entrained flow and what is the total flow? Let's do the same thing again. Using the same method, let's put our tic-tac-toe up there. 100 in the top left-hand corner, 20. 60 in the center, 100 minus 60 is 40. 60 minus 20 is 40. If we divide the 40 by itself to get 1, 
the bottom we do the same thing. Looks like we've got a one-to-one -one ratio. But what is R in train flow? Again, using the same method where we multiplied uh, the base flow rate times the both parts of the ratio, we have a base flow of 10 liters a minute, a one, an entrained flow of 10 liters a minute because of the one-to-one -one ratio, for a total output of 20 liters per minute. Okay, in that last example, uh, the total flow rate did not meet the high flow criteria of 30 liters per minute because of the one-to-one -one ratio and the fact that you had your flow meter set on 10, you only had 20 liters a minute. Um, let's assume you could not turn your flow meter up to 15. Let's just pretend that 10 is your maximum. Uh, can you answer these questions? What FIO2 will the patient get? And is there any way to keep a 60% and still have a high flow system? Back. I'm glad uh, that you stuck around to the end. Uh, and I realize I went very fast. Fortunately, since this is a video, you can pause it and allow you to take some time to look over the content. If you want to, use the comments to uh, discuss this. Uh, thanks for playing. See you next time.